Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's take a look at relays and messaging in JS8 Call. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. All right, so you might be wondering why you would want to use a relay or a message in JS8 Call. Well, there's a few reasons. Relays allow us to communicate with stations that we might not be able to hear direct on the radio. Messages also allow us to communicate with other stations and they don't even need to be at the keyboard when we leave that message for them. So let's jump over to the Pi and take a look at both of these methods today. Now before we jump into this, let me say that if you haven't seen the video that I did earlier this year on the basics of JS8 Call, you need to go back and watch that first. Uh, things might make a little bit more sense for you. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below, and you can come back to this video after you've seen that one. Now, there's a particular station that I want to try to uh, relay a message to and then see if we're able to also leave a message for him. And that station is WE4SEL. And there's a couple of ways we can go about seeing who can hear that particular station. One of the ways that we can go about uh, looking to see who might be able to hear him is we can come over to our herd call sign list and we can simply hold our mouse over a particular call sign. That's going to give us a list of both who that station is hearing and who has heard that particular station. And this is one way we can kind of uh, sift through this and see who it, uh, who it is. Now, in this particular list, I do see that he has heard WE4SEL. Another way that we can go about doing this is we can simply click on All Call right up here at the top of the list. We can come down to this button here, Directed to All Call, and click on it. And then come up to Query Call Call Sign. And that's please acknowledge you can communicate directly with whichever call sign we plug in. So if we clicked on this, we would get this information here populated into our outgoing message box. All we would need to do is replace call sign with WE4SEL. And then we could send this out. Anybody that was able to hear that station would go ahead and respond to us. It would let us know the last time it heard that station and how well it was hearing that station. Since we know that KN4TRT can hear WE4SEL, let's see if we can use his station in order to send a relay message. So I'm going to highlight his call right here, and then I'm going to come down to where it says directed to KN4TRT. After clicking on that, I'm going to come up to please re relay this message to its destination. Now, it populates the first part of this, but we need to put a couple of extra things in here. So I'm going to put the call of where I want the message sent to, followed by the bracket, and then our message. So we'll say test for, I uh, need to learn how to spell, V-I-D-E-O. Let's try that instead. We'll go ahead and hit the send button, and then give that. It's going to take it 45 seconds to go out. You can see that right over here on this box. It says sending and then it gives us the number of seconds left. So this is a total of three frames. I'm in normal mode so each frame takes 15 seconds to go out. And we'll see if we can get KN4TRT to go ahead and relay the message to WE4SEL. Now if you look up here in this message box here you will see that KN4TRT did indeed relay our message to WE4SEL. Now, provided WE4SEL heard that message, he will send back an acknowledgement. If he didn't hear that message, 
then he won't send back that acknowledgement. We'll have to give that a couple of minutes here and see if that relay went through. Alright, so after about 60 seconds or so, I did not receive an acknowledgement back from WE4SEL. This tells me that he probably didn't decode or didn't get a full decode on the message. Now, I did catch that KN4TRT was in fast mode, so it may have been uh, not as good of a signal going over to WE4SEL. In this particular case, we would just have to find another path to try to reach WE4SEL. Okay, so I went back to my heard call sign list and I see that KB8HTU can also hear WE4SEL. So let's go ahead and try one more time to get this message to go through. I've got KB8HTU highlighted. I'm going to come down to directed to KB8HTU and we're going to come back up to this relay message here. Again, it's pre-formatted part of it for us, so I'll do WE4SEL. We'll give it the bracket, and we'll just send test for video. Let's go ahead and hit the send button again and give this 45 seconds to send out, and we'll see if we can finally get an acknowledgement from WE4SEL. Okay, so again, I'm looking up here in my message list, and I see that KB8HTU is sending that message to WE4SEL. Now, that'll take another 45 seconds to go out, uh, maybe 60 seconds uh, with an additional frame at the end of it, because uh, the relay station will tell the, uh, the final station who the originating station was. And you can see that up here in the top, it has turned red because it decoded my call sign in that message. So we'll give that uh, another few seconds here and see if we can get a reply this time from WE4SEL. Okay, now since I can hear WE4SEL uh, direct, you're going to see this information here where I'm hearing him at negative 7. You'll also see that he did send the acknowledgement back to KB8HTU. What I'm not seeing though at this point is KB8HTU going ahead and relaying that message back to me. That could be uh, for a couple of different reasons. Either KB8HTU is not hearing WE4SEL, or it may be that KB8HTU was acknowledging a heartbeat uh, during the time that WE4SEL was replying to me. Now, let's go ahead and talk about messages for a minute. Messages are a great way to communicate with someone, and they don't even have to be sitting in front of their keyboard when you send the message. As long as their station is on and receiving, we should be able to get a message through to them. So we'll pick on WE4SEL again. I'm going to highlight his station, and then I'm going to come down to directed to WE4SEL. I'll click on that, and I'm going to come up to this option here that says MSG message. Please store this message in your inbox. We'll go ahead and click on that, and it will populate that into this outgoing text box. All I need to do is replace message with the actual message that I want to send. So we'll say test for video. And let's go ahead and hit the send button and let's see if we can get the message through to WE4SEL. And there you can see the WE4SEL did send me an acknowledgement that he received that message. Now on his side, right up here, by, it would be my call sign in his call sign list. And then instead of a star, you would get a black flag that flag would be the indicator that you had a message. Now I'm going to come down to W8APP because I know that Anthony has left me some messages. In fact, he left me one earlier today. So if I had a black flag beside Anthony's name indicating that I had an incoming message, I would simply right-click on his call and come down to Show Message Inbox. At that point, I can see the latest message that he has left for me. I've got a couple of options here. I can go ahead and just click reply 
and try to send a direct message back to him. Or, let's close out of this, and I'm going to right-click right here and move down to where it says Store Message. So I click the Store Message and it'll pop up this box here. So I went ahead and typed out a quick message to Anthony and I also included the date. That way if maybe he doesn't pick up this message for several days, he'll know exactly the date that I sent this message. Now I can just go ahead and click OK. It's not going to transmit anything out, but the next time Anthony sends a heartbeat, my station is going to acknowledge that and let him know that he has a message. Now I don't have an example here on the screen to be able to show you, but when you received a heartbeat, here's a heartbeat right here, uh, or a heartbeat acknowledgement rather. When you receive this, it would also have out to the right side of that, it might say message ID 136. That would let you know that there was a message waiting for you at that particular station and that would let you know the message number. So let's assume that uh, that was N0GQ. What I would do is I would go down and find N0GQ in my call sign list. I would right click on that and say directed to. Now there's another way to do that as well. If you don't want to right click, you can highlight it and come to right here where it says directed to. It's just two different ways to get to the same uh, menu, submenu system in JS8 call. But you click on that, you come to where it says query message ID, and you would type in your message number. Once he received your query, he would go ahead and deliver the message to you. So two different ways to leave a message. We can send it direct uh, or we can store it on our system for the other operator to, re to retrieve at a later date and time. So even though we weren't successful in getting a relay message passed during this video, it should give you enough information to see how they work. And you should have a good idea of how messages work inside JS8 Call as well. Both of these are really powerful tools that we can use to communicate with maybe those we can't hear direct or maybe someone that's not sitting at their keyboard at that particular moment. All right, guys, I hope you found this helpful. Leave us a thumbs up before you head off, please. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.